to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Monday, thank goodness, September 23rd, thank goodness is Monday, thank goodness that that weekend is over and we can flush that thing down the toilet and move on, I mean look, we have two games tonight, that's fine, let's get past it, yeah, this was I'm on to one week of the four. least pleasurable weekends of football, <laughs> I was uh, polling people uh, both in real life and online and just seeing how people feel and what's amazing is so every week, you know, look, Sometimes it doesn't break right for you, but that means it broke right for your opponent, right? You know, half the people win, half the people lose. Sometimes somehow, it just broke. somehow this week, 100% of people lost. <laughs> like every single person out there feels like they had a bad week. 100%. It's in it, this week was insane and stupid and upside down. And I'm I'm glad that that you're back and you're listening after getting out of your own, you know, fantasy. Uh, burn unit because this this week was crazy. Yeah, the bandages are everywhere and the, the points are going downward. Like we're scoring fewer and fewer points. The pass rushes this weekend were outrageous. The, the morning games were like every single time every quarterback dropped back to pass was like Grash! Yeah, unless their name was Sam Darnold or Andy Dalton. <laughs> right. If you had red hair oh, and a beard man. You put up the most points in fa- – like, if you want one, like, fact of the weekend to describe how you're feeling, it should be that the, the Andy Dalton and Sam Darnold's team scored the most points of any teams this weekend. Don't forget oh, yeah. about Malik Willis. And Daniel Star. Jones. Yes. And Bo Nix. <laughs> all guys you started, right? Yeah. How, so, much, how much time do we have to talk about the Carolina Panthers? This and- is why the move was the right move, is because you have – 52 other players that were just depressed. Yeah, there were receivers that wanted to be able to catch the ball. Like and Deontay then, Johnson's entire career could be defined by that decision. Yeah, now, to be fair, the decision has come out and said that this is temporary. They expect him to start again this year. Now, that was that was before the that Andy Dalton. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Andy for Dalton. another team, right? Um, no, they meant for the Panthers, but um, I, what is it? Andy Dalton is the only quarterback this season? Who has thrown 300 yards and three touchdowns? Incredible. Yeah. NFL, what happened? You what know, happened this week? You know how happy I was to pick up the Raiders defense before they made oh, the switch to Andy Dalton? had to be ecstatic. Not so happy now. The Panthers are, I mean, tiebreakers aside, they're one game out of first, everybody. <laughs> this was a fun weekend, man. The, the, NFL. the Rams beat the 49ers. They came <laughs> yeah. back and beat them. Oh. The parody in the NFL is what is part of what makes it absolutely incredible. That was too paradoxious last <laughs> yesterday. What, what I was trying to make up a word. Okay, I don't know what word you were trying to. Make I was up. trying to riff on parody, but it, oh, okay. he was. I think he's saying like paradoxious. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I went okay. docious. You also left the spaces between the syllables. You try and make up new words on the fly. I'm so okay. Um, it was. It was a weird weekend, so we're commiserating with you. It was a struggle to find the Monday Punday names that were on the good side of things. Yeah, the positive names, the names that did really, really well, there's like four or five that were regularly started, and then the rest were all people who were not usually we, started. We have an Andy Dalton one? We Yeah, of course. He Someone was awesome. started Andy Dalton? I mean, whether you started him or not, he deserves to be here. Yeah, this, okay. is, this is all... Uh, Respect on the names. So we have Monday, Punday, your submissions. Your submissions about the weekend, the good, the bad, the ugly. Jason trying to take over with his own? No, no, no. no. We no. just want it clear. Uh, these are ours. <laughs> <laughs> these, these are yours. Gotcha. No, yeah. It's not the best this it, week. It was, it was the, let's just say they reflect the weekend. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. We, we do have, I mean, we're going to start with the good, which uh, will go Rashi Nice. Mm. Ooh, rice, rice, baby. Uh, I Jawan my week Jennings. Yeah, yeah, you did. That's not bad. Uh, Dandy Dalton. Yeah. Oh, Kai Wynn Williams. Derek, That's a real one. 
Derek Hungry. <laughs> yeah, what? yeah. We're, told, we did not do these. Uh, Chuba Hubba Hubbard. <laughs> oh yeah, Hubba Hubbard. Uh, Amari Super. There yeah, he is. Oh, baby. Oh, Marvin. There he is, son, Junior. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, go ahead and deliver that a little differently, Jason. Mar oh, Marvin. There he is, son, okay. Junior. And of course, Malik Yabers back in the building. But we had some bad, 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 bad. And we've got the tight end disasters edition. It's all of them. So let's go. Let's hit this, guys. Mark Scamdrews. Trey McGlide. Sam LaPoop Dispense. <laughs> Travis Smelsey. Brock Bowel Movement. And uh, what do you, what's the last one there? Isaiah Unlikely. Yeah, so. Yeah. It continues. Now Now people <laughs> People don't uh, They don't want the tight ends. Calvin Diddley squat. Oh. oh, you have Justin Hurtbert. J.K. Sobbins. And uh, by We Kill. That's a good one. <laughs> uh, C.D. Sham. Or oh, Faker Mayfield. Uh, Brandon Ayucky. Yeah. And uh, this one is special for me. Dude, where's my car? Derek, you did it to us again. <laughs> I was not going to. To touch their car this week. I hope everybody and listened to Andy. you touched him all over the place. <laughs> I hope I, I did. I, you touched him in that's the That's a lesson yeah. learned. The you, stream, you touched, the start. You touch too much Derek Carr and you're going to yeah. feel bad. They dust him for Prince. It's just. It's Jason. <laughs> <laughs> Jason's all over him. Oh, man. It, to be fair, to be fair, Foot Clan, I, I had to start Derek Carr in one of oh, my main leagues. Like two, two of my main leagues. I, paid, I was there. I paid 16 fab. Remember when I was like, this is embarrassing. Yeah. How much fab I'm paying for Derek Carr? Because I know, I know it's not going to work, but processes, it should yeah. work. You know what? We got to start being results over process. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know like in fantasy, it's we're, we're trying to be as smart, as wise, intelligent as we can be. We're focused on the process over the results because that's the way that you're going to end up right more often at the end. Right. But if we could. Focus on results over process. If we could just get skip that and be right all the time, that'd be so much better. Yeah, I mean, I played, I played, I played the same, I played the same players that I I played last week, where I scored the most points in my league. Yeah, I'm not even gonna come close to median. I'm I'm like half the points. They're the same dudes. They were unhappy this week. All right, um, man, dude, where's my car? <laughs> where did he go? Uh, every Monday, you can submit your favorite puns or your most annoying puns over on Twitter at the FF Ballers or on Instagram at Fantasy Footballers. A reminder, the community, if you want to weep together and celebrate together, join the foot.com. If you are a member of the ultimate tier, that means you get everything that we do. So you get the ultimate draft kit and the DFS pass and the ultimate dashboard all year long, every every year. Like you don't pay for anything else it's just the ultimate subscription at jointhefoot.com that's brand new this year highly requested and we finally made the switch to make it available all right uh let's move forward let's try to oh, move we shall forward. we got this welcome to ready to roll presented by nissan All right, this week we are focusing on running backs who have underachieved early. We're through three weeks, also known as 21% of the regular season if your playoffs start in week 15 as is normal. And there's always a tension at this point in the season. You're saying, are things going to correct themselves? Is it bad luck? Do I pivot? What do we do? And it could be frustrating if your running back is seeing good volume, but maybe they are not doing what you want them to be doing. So we looked at running backs who averaged 13 touches per game through the first three weeks and the reason we use that as a barometer I did a study back in 2022 that showed a real correlation between that number uh, leading to future fantasy success 13 touches um, uh, per game especially in week one and uh, that was on the tips and tricks episode and so we're looking at 13 touch threshold running backs now here's what they average um, on, on average, running backs average 0 0.72 fantasy points per touch. Okay. okay. And so we found there's a consistent thread for running backs who underachieved that number, who scored fewer fantasy points per touch, but were getting the volume and that they saw a boost for the rest of the season. In other words, these are basically trade for candidates or running backs who could break through. Maybe they're doing okay and they can do better. Maybe they're doing poorly and they could do okay. 
Um, last year, here's a list of some of the guys who were hitting that touch threshold but underachieving the points per touch basis. Jameer Gibbs, Josh Jacobs, Isaiah Pacheco, Rashad White, Kyron Williams, and those were some names. And you, and you look and you go, okay, those were running backs, you know, the ones that hit, the ones that came through were kind of the ones on playoff teams, the ones on, like, good rosters that ended up, um, you know, making some noise down the stretch. So that's how we want to look at, well, what's the list of running backs this year who on a per-touch basis are underperforming but are getting the volume and maybe focus on trying to acquire these guys or starting these guys, being confident, holding on to them if you've got them, not just getting sad and trading them away. The list is as follows. Devin Singletary, probably not a playoff team. Joe Mixon, Jordan Mason, probably playoff teams. Uh, Tony Pollard. Not Probably looking great. Probably not a playoff team. Bijan Robinson, I fully think that they'll be a playoff team, um, the Falcons. Ramondre Stevenson? Probably not. Rashad White? Mm -hmm. Probably. They're, they've made the playoffs four years in a row. You got Josh Jacobs for the Packers, Najee for the Steelers, who somehow always make the playoffs, and DeAndre Swift for the Bears, who um, I believe – are going to the Super Bowl, right? That's that's what all the Bears fans <laughs> were saying. E. So, like, of this list that I just read, are there a name or two in that list that you think, like, they are going to be more special rest of season from what they've done so far? I'll take the cheat code. Najee Harris right now looks locked and loaded because Jalen Warren got hurt again. He was hurt in the preseason. Yeah, that was pretty sweet. He got hurt again yesterday. So, the team's identity is to play defense. And win football games, which means to run the football and avoid mistakes. So I think I think Najee has gone from a place of nausea mm -hmm. when you start him to just like probably very safe for volume and baseline. I th I think the one that I would point out, and it might it might surprise you because I if I've got this guy everywhere and I'm super happy with him, but it's Bijan. Bijan Robinson has been great. But he has been underperforming on a per-touch basis. But the volume is there. We know the talent is there. This is an offense that I think at the end of the year is going to be clicking. And it is not clicking right now. You you, you see they're, they're still trying to figure stuff out. They lost some linemen um, last night. It's not all roses right now for B. John Robinson. And I do think... I hope they find them. Find the roses? No, the linemen. <laughs> okay, yes. Yeah, me too. Wow. Boston. <laughs> that's a, that's, that a, that's, that's a morning. That's a, that's a morning a Jason joke. It's yeah. a morning problem for you guys. That's all that is. <laughs> Only I I'm allowed to make those jokes. Right. You liked it out. I thought it was great. Yeah, because it was it's top notch. Uh, yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll Bijan found the the end zone for free on yeah. that one play. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Thank you, Bijan. <laughs> Goodness. You're talking about the Kyle Pitts play. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Can't I mean, go one yard further, Mister Pitts. No, no, Mister Pitts could not go to the end zone. <laughs> Um, and, and any, I, any further thoughts there? I, I, I have the question of which we haven't had this discussion yet. Look, Jordan Mason has been uh, like, he's been pretty good here for the 49ers yesterday. It felt like things could have gone a little bit better for him. However, the conversation of when do you go or do you go after Christian McCaffrey? Yeah. I mean, if you have Jordan that's, Mason, cause that's two weeks now, right? Yeah. Uh, so two weeks of the IR. Technically speaking, he could be back in three weeks. We don't know if that's going to be the case. But what uh, what what scenarios are you looking at? Of like, I'm going to go after Christian McCaffrey. And uh, look, it's easy if you're three zero and you got great bench players. You hit. I can go get Christian McCaffrey. But if you're like one and two, and you got Mason, like what? How are you approaching that situation? I th I think now is a good time to try to acquire Christian McCaffrey because you're still weeks away, and the manager who has Christian McCaffrey might be 0-3. And, and you know what I mean? And they might be like, I need a player now. I can't wait three weeks. And you can take on Christian McCaffrey and secure that one running back spot just completely for the rest of the season. There, There is. I mean, Jordan Mason is a good between-the-tackles runner, obviously. And he's he's – been a good substitute, but the offensive identity is destroyed. Yeah, because he like, can't catch I mean, the ball. Yeah, because the, the multifaceted nature of Christian McCaffrey in this offense, like, and the fact they're losing ball games is a very good sign for making sure he's back out there with a good good workload. We that was brought up weeks ago. It was like 
well, what's the record when they need him to come back? Like, what are they competing? Like, they lost another game. They're one and two. So I think that's – I think it's a good name to bring up. I think there's going to be desperate managers that need to unload and restock their team so they have a shot, and they're not going to get that shot with um, McCaffrey being on their bench. All right, thanks again to our sponsor that was ready to roll. Uh, we want to thank Nissan and the all-new Reimagine Nissan Kicks. Take on the city with the Nissan Kicks. Bold new look plus safety features like the Nissan Safety Shield 360 technologies that will have your back in traffic. Head over to NissanUSA.com to learn more. Nissan Safety Shield Technologies can't prevent collisions or warn in all situations. See the owner's manual for important safety information. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. All right. Justin Herbert aggravated the ankle injury, and he left the game early. He was in a walking boot, and... They have a week five by, so next week might be, might be a. I mean, I I would say he's probably going to sit. You think he's going to sit? I mean, it's I mean, against they, Kansas City. It's against the Chiefs' divisional opponent. They're going to definitely want him out there. But it, it, how much does it matter? In the sense that, like, it doesn't matter for Herbert. Nobody's starting Herbert right now. Week one, he was the quarterback twenty-four. Week two, he was the quarterback twenty-four. So far this week, he's the quarterback 24. So, really? Yeah. Impressive. Um, yeah, he's been consistent. I expect him to drop, though, after two more games uh, that are played tonight. I guess it makes a difference for Lad McConkey and Quentin Johnston. I mean, those weren't players I was playing anyway. That, that's my point. So I. It matters for the offense getting anywhere near that painted area. So maybe for J.K. Dobbins? Yeah. I mean, Dobbins had a disappointing week. Gus Bus, I think, didn't get off the bus. I mean, he I don't think he was on the sideline. We knew that this particular matchup against the Steelers was going to be tough for J.K. Dobbins. The the fact that the the volume shifted so heavily, though, this where weeks one and two it was, that was a split. Mm -hmm. Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins. Yesterday was not a split, and I'm curious if that is – The split might have helped. It might have. It, it might have. It, but if, like, if that's – is that what it's going to be, the recipe moving forward, that's – TBD. Well, and, and then if you don't have Herbert for week four and you have a bye in week five, I think it's fair to say, what are you doing with the wide receivers? Because, you know, McConkey through three weeks, oh, gosh. five for 39, two for 26, three for 44. And it's the Chiefs next You know, week. I, I'm not – I'm willing to drop him personally. Yeah, I, I, think, I think pretty much most of the – most of them, obviously never a, a running back like Dobbins who's getting – Dobbins who's getting volume. But, yeah. This week is a tough matchup, and then a bye week. Sam Laporta left the game with the Cardinals with a right lateral ankle sprain, came back in twice. I saw him come back into yeah. the game twice. So That's very specific. I feel like we don't normally get information like that. The right lateral ankle sprain? Yeah. They're like, it's low or it's high. Yeah, It's right lateral. Okay. Is that is that worse? Well, that, that's the not being a doctor part that's going to hurt you. Just tell me low or high. That's yeah, all I that understand. One, that one I know. Tell me owie, no owie. Yeah. Like, low? It's not as bad. Is the right lateral high? <laughs> is that, where is the right lateral? Is the right lateral low? I don't know. He came back out twice, so maybe it's not that bad. Trey McBride, concussion. Yeah. Devontae a... Smith, concussion. <laughs> what? what are you laughing um, at? I, okay, so here's what I got from AI. At... Here's what I got from oh, AI okay. on the this right lateral. Okay, this you you did you realized where you were? No, yeah. no. We, we were talking like, about dudes. It was like the, concussion, dude, and then you the cracked Devontae up. The Devontae Smith uh, injury was an albatross in a disgusting defensive play, in my opinion. But uh, no, this is far more fun to talk about than that. Um, I hope I I asked AI is the right lateral high or low, and it said uh, uh the right lateral is located on the right side of the uterus which is considered oh. the lateral position so i don't know i, I, don't I think, think that's a, i think ai got it wrong uh, i don't know maybe <laughs> maybe maybe not but um yeah so i don't know if it's high or low just to answer it's part the of question. the uterus it's part of the uterus okay good okay. thank you thank you for <laughs> thank you dr internet um <laughs> skylar thompson left with a rib injury Dude, uh he got annihilated he was getting destroyed to the point, if you didn't watch it, I mean, he got he took one shot in particular that was a it was a big time thumping, and then the play that he left, like he he barely got he, hit. he got pushed over. He was so broken by that point, it was just that was the final fall over. 
So that team, uh, right now, the Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddell situation, the Devon Achan situation, it's all bad. It's all bad, 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 bad. Yeah. Um, going they might be dull finished. Am I right? You got to call Swish. You got to call it quick. <laughs> no, he's no. Hit, that button. hit it. I want to be busted. Busted. All, all right. right. On this week, I want to be busted. Going back real quick to the concussions that I laughed at. Um, yeah. yeah those boo. Those, yeah, were, those were both the end of the game, the end of their, you know, they, they, were, they were near the end and they were ruled out. Uh, and both of them were just brutal, really hard hits. With the Eagles with a week five bye, I it's it's going to be very tempting to make sure that he does not clear this week. So I, I don't know. I I worry about both of these players' availability next week. You got to yeah, pay attention if you've got them on your roster. And honestly, this was the first game where I was like a little. I was like actually disappointed in the performance and play of Trey McBride, and the injury happened very late, but. That's fair. Frequently when he was targeted in this game, I noticed people were very, very close to him. They were on his back. He was not getting separation. He was only three for 25. The Cardinals really struggled to move the football, and, and he hasn't scored in three weeks. So it's just added to the list of disappointing tight end situations. And everyone scored last week. <laughs> yes, he recovered the fumble. I mean, in the honestly, end zone. That, I mean, if he didn't recover the fumble in the end zone. Five for thirty, six for sixty-seven, three for twenty-five. It's just been, yeah, it's been a bummer. And they and they need him desperately. Like in Arizona, it's kind of Marvin. And even that and connection, Marvin is not. That connection has been a little bit frustrating too. He has, he has had two good games, but this game in particular was like this. There were plenty of plays that a superstar does not leave on the field. That Malik Neighbors would have made. Yeah. Tank Dell evaluated for a hand injury. Should be fine. Sam Darnold evaluated for a knee injury as a precaution. He should be fine. Jalen Warren pulled with the MRI coming on his knee. And Adam Thielen left with a hamstring Burr. injury. On a touchdown I catch. I went out on top. <laughs> yes, you did, Adam. You <laughs> caught that ball. I you left the way I lived. Remember me. <laughs> That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. We'll take a break, and then we'll come back and talk about the three studs of the week. <laughs> this week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffin. <laughs> Guys, you definitely played. I mean, it's. It, I find it to be... Like, this week is also – here's another fun fact. Anthony Richardson got a win. Like, Anthony Richardson played some of the worst football of any quarterback this week. It yes. was some of the most grotesque quarterback play, and he's a winner. It, it was an incredible game back and forth between Caleb Williams <laughs> and Anthony Richardson. Each it was looking, an ineptitude each fact. Each was, looking so bad. And then Caleb ends up on the stat sheet with, a, with his first, like, good – statistical game of like I had a lot of yards and I threw a couple touchdowns but he was so there's a reason Anthony Richardson team won the game sorry we said studs uh Dak uh boo yeah. Dak okay does not deserve to be here 28 I mean, for 51 379 and two without using CD Lamb somehow and a rushing touchdown he had a very good fantasy output he was not very good in that game and it, it was a it was a blowout loss for the uh, for the Cowboys until all of a sudden it wasn't, and then what is the deal with the Ravens? I, it was so weird. Do they just do they put do they clear the bench in the second half? It was it, no, it's always fourth quarter. They had a dominating lead in the fourth, and then it was like they just collapsed the. You're Cowboys. talking about against the Raiders or against the Cowboys? I'm talking about oh. both. Yeah. Um, and so in this game, it took a, a, a an actual recovered onside kick, which I was like, are we going to ever see that this year? Um, but the Cowboys got an onside kick. Um, had some uh, fortune at the very end of that game, and he ended up okay. But Lamar in the same game was good on 15 pass attempts. So 51 pass attempts for Dak, 15 for Lamar. That's part of why you had a goose for Andrews and one for four for Likely. 182 passing yards, one uh, touchdown. That's and part of Mark Andrews. There isn't. There's an more parts. There's an unsolved. This is the good, Mike. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Stud, stud muffin. Sorry. Stud muffin. It's a good. Lamar had a very good fantasy game. Yeah, he's the quarterback one right now. He had 87 rushing yards. Brock Purdy was amazing, and they lost. 292 and three, all of them to Juwan Jennings. <laughs> Malik Willis, uh, 
What a dude! Dif- what a difference a franchise makes. He looked great. Malik Willis, he, like, uh, th- there's still some young player mistakes, but he, overall, I mean, blown away. Honestly, of the I, he, Malik Willis was a player after watching him in Tennessee. You're like, this is unredeemable. What in the starts that he put out there? Like, you can't, you cannot fix this. Gets traded. Gets thrown right before the season. Gets thrown into two starts. And while he, I mean, he did very little in week two. He played well for what he was asked to do. And then in this one, he, I thought he played qu- quite the, well. The and difference w- and coach. Will Levis <laughs> stinks. Yeah, the the comparison of season long statistics between uh, Malik Willis, who was Will Levis's backup, traded away, and Will Levis is very comical in the win loss and the yards and yeah. the touchdowns and the interceptions, every department. Um, but it, it's amazing in the NFL what a coaching staff can do. Uh, I'll tell you, man, I'm so impressed by the Packers and what they've done losing love and not skipping a beat. Well, as crazy as Will Levis deserves like he, – he deserves a split second in the stud muffin because he was 26 for 34 in this game. Like he actually threw the ball well. He's just doing the Levis thing. Yeah. He turned it over three times again. I mean, two picks and a fumble loss. He's got a fumble loss in every game. He's got five interceptions. Like, he can't get out of his own way, but 260 and two is also kind of good. There is good. no human that has ever played quarterback that has not been able to see pressure more than this man. And the reason why he's got these fumbles and a lot of these interceptions is because, I mean, I, I really think if you had him behind a really good offensive line, Will Levis could pick you apart. He's got a great arm. The, the the arm talent is there, but if you get pressure on him, he it's like his eyes are closed in the pocket. He can't see you. Andy Dalton, 319 and three. No interceptions. Absolutely dominant. Cincinnati <laughs> next week. Okay. Against a good Raiders He's defense. Had two starts for Carolina in the last two years, and he was the quarterback seven and quarterback two. And we, there you go. Uh Kyle threw this one in here and it's it needs to be shared. Uh, Bryce Young has 583 total attempts, zero touchdowns of 20 or more yards. He does have three uh, of 20 or more yards to other teams. <laughs> I don't know why Kyle had to throw that one in there, but the point being, 583 attempts, zero long touchdowns. Andy Dalton, two and two starts for the Panthers. So the the, the What do you do? Can I ask you a philosophical question yes. about building a team? This is not the first time we've been here. Ryan Fitzpatrick and, and you know, there, there's this middling quarterback tier, the Andy Dalton level player. And they're so much better than about half the quarterbacks that are playing. Yes. But every team wants to win a championship, right? You don't want to finish seven and 10 or right. eight and nine. So they abandon these guys. Yeah. Oftentimes, uh, they abandon them for the. Hope of the Mahomes, which is like one in a generation. So you lose a bunch of games and you recycle, 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 Trubisky, Fields, Caleb, on we go. But, like, you can win so many games with a Dalton or a Fitzpatrick. They can really hurt you, though, depending on your franchise. Like, I don't want to be a middle-of-the-pack franchise. I would rather, like, if I'm building a team, I don't. here's what Andy Dalton's and all these guys need to do. Your 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 Nick Foles, your Andy Dalton's, your, your players who are – these they can win you games. They are good. The Joe Flacco's, they need to not go to teams like Carolina. They need to go to teams who are great. They need to be backing up Mahomes. They need to be backing up, you know, even Aaron Rodgers with a great Jets defense or something. You know, where it's like if if the backup needs to come in, we we can win a Super Bowl with this guy. You know, Nick Foles did it with the Eagles. It's like that's where those type of players need to be because they're not going to help a franchise to get to six, seven wins and then not be able to get a good enough pick and then yada, yada. Do you have any um, anything to say to a quarterback on pace for 45 passing touchdowns? Yeah, Jason. Sam Darnold, Jason, 3-0 and Sam Darnold, 3-0 and uh, fantasy superstar Sam Darnold, um, who threw for four touchdowns and I, could have been five because of a I penalty. Said I, I, I said he looked great the first two weeks, um, but I really wanted to see a third week against what I think was a good defense in the Houston Texans. And he did not look good. He looked pretty, pretty great. Uh, he he was. I mean, he's been slinging it, man. And and even when weapons have gone down, Justin Jefferson obviously helps a ton. That guy is always open. 
like wide open. He, like I don't, you know, when you're watching the broadcast angle, you don't even understand what happens. You just they drop back to pass and they throw the ball and there's Justin Jefferson with no one with a four yards of him. It's like remember the part of the off season where it seemed like they were cursed because they lost. Mm -hmm. Like Addison yep. had the problem and then you lost J.J. McCarthy and injuries were everywhere and Minnesota fans were screaming in the street. Now it seems like they've. What did you say? They've been touched by an angel. Yeah, they. they oh I, man, yesterday they were. They were everything every, that happened. <laughs> everything that happened. If he if he threw a a pick that the defender got a hand on and it tipped it up, it just went to his guy. <laughs> you when, know, it's like is next week though. Next week is is he the pumpkin of the week? Because Carr was the pumpkin of the week this week. Looked amazing. Next week he's got to go to Lambeau. I already, you know, I going to Lambeau and performing in division very difficult. Yeah. Um, is is he the pumpkin of next week? I think it. I don't think so. I know he was at home for these two games, but like the 49ers, they're one and two. They're still a very good team. The Houston Texans are a very good team, and he just pumpkin. I mean, like you're calling for the I'm pumpkin. Calling for the pumpkin. It, I really hope not. Yeah, I really hope not. I too. really, really hope not because if he doesn't pumpkin in Lambo, if they beat Green Bay in Green Bay, they one Al Borland won't show up for work on Monday, <laughs> and two, this is like super for real. This team, like this offense, this defense, the uh, defense is is legit. But but my point is, if he doesn't pumpkin this week in Lambo, do you know where he goes and plays the week after? The Jets. He goes home, baby. <laughs> Take it to him, super, Darnold. Super revenge game. Yeah, most revenge games you just you just laugh about it because a player changed teams. No, this one. This you think Andy Dalton doesn't want to go out and throw 500 yards on the Jets? This is, I mean, Geno Smith, Darnold. Yeah, sorry. yes, Geno Smith, Sam Darnold. These uh, M Malik Willis this week. These reclamation projects by good franchises. Man. Wait, Darnold and Geno were both first round Jets picks. Gino is a second rounder. Oh, was he? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, they they were, but I mean, it's but like, they were still picks by the. Jets. I mean, Justin Fields is three and zero, guys. Yeah, he is. Maybe you don't put them in a position to make the mistakes that he was making before. Like he's executing an offense, he's not as exciting for fantasy, but you're winning ball games. That's what Malik Willis did. Man, okay. Saquon continues his assault on all things good. Uh, 17 for 149 and two. He's touched the ball on 40% of all offensive snaps and it's going up because if Devontae Smith misses and A.J. Brown's out again, it's the Saquon or Bust and Dallas Goddard offense. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Dallas Goddard. <laughs> he went wild. Saquon has been great. I mean, I saw the question asked online of like, you know, who's the 101 if we were to redo it right now? You know, if we, if you were drafting today, who would you draft first? And Saquon is in the conversation, at least, of, like, he might be. With what's happened with Braylon Allen, with Bijan still being in a timeshare, yeah. I mean, why CMC wouldn't you? Why wouldn't, why I mean, wouldn't you got, you you got take... Justin Jefferson out there. Yeah. You got, oh, I thought you were just saying no, no, running no. backs. But, but, yeah, I mean. Yeah, I mean, but he's in the conversation. Justin Jefferson, Bijan, Brees. Uh, Saquon, you know, Saquon, yeah. CD. That's probably the list. NFL underdogs. Ben Fox uh, posted this. NFL underdogs of five plus five point five points. So if you're, you're an underdog by more than five and a half uh -huh. points, they are now thirteen and two against the spread this season with nine outright wins of the thirteen. Good. So gracious. if you think that Vegas can predict what's going on, you'd be wrong. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is an the any given Sunday cliche is so true. I. That's the parody, man. That's what makes the NFL great, though, is that you can have the Raiders come back and beat the Ravens, have the Ravens blow out the Cowboys, and then have the Panthers blow out the Raiders who blew out the – like who came back to beat the Ravens. And it, it's 11 on 11, right? It's like if three guys ate the wrong thing that morning, the game can completely change. Like it's so interdependent on how individuals play – but also as a team, is wild. I, I love it. I think about it all the time in the beginning of the year. This time of year, like when we were leaving last week, and there's some teams that are 0-2, you know, like the Panthers, where you go, I literally don't see how they win a game. I don't see a method for this team to be even in a game, and then they win the next week. With 36 points, the, the number one on the week. Yeah. Let's just make sure that the right people are getting the touchdowns. 
That is like, something yeah, we're going to yeah. work on, people. Give me the parody. I love it. Foot I love plan. The, I love the upsets. I love the comebacks. But you want a little Ayuk, not all Jennings. Yeah. We want a little C.D. Lamb, not all Turban. Yeah. What, or like, Turpin. Turpin. <laughs> <laughs> what is that, Turpin the running back? No, not Robert Turpin, but yeah, Turpin. It's just like, the at, especially in the morning games, it was just, it was, it was all touchdowns by guys you're like, wait, wait, who? Who scored? Yeah. Oh, cool. Kyron scored three times, Kyron Williams, in the comeback victory that looked all but over early and was not. He has scored a lot of touchdowns since the beginning of 2023, 20 of them. And he plays Chicago, very tough defense next week. He's a machine, man. 91% of snaps yeah, week one. I took the L on Twitter this morning. This is not a committee. 79% week two, 90% week three. <laughs> and you, you well, know. I mean, in, in losing these pass catchers, like, the Kyron's the one proven commodity you have. I will, I, will, I will say this, though. Here's a W that you can have. I don't know if you noticed this, um, but late in the game, you know, game on the line, the Niners, they force them to punt, and it was a big return. That wasn't Kyron. No, Kyron. <laughs> it's like, okay, we can't have Kyron yeah, returning. Yeah, you can't risk it, We man. need him out there too much. <laughs> I didn't notice that. Thank you. <laughs> Derrick Henry ran for 151 and two. Where is Derrick? Speaking of Saquon being the 101, I'm not saying that Derrick Henry should be, but he's been, yeah, he's, he's also been very good. And like, I get it. He's, yeah, we, we didn't bring him in here, or whatever, to be the focal point of the offense, except he's, playing fantastic they gave him 25 carries yesterday so <laughs> liar liar pants on fire i mean 13 this, 18 25 the last three weeks there's just about no more game scripty player you know th this is derrick henry is the yeti in victories and they even though i mean this game was a blowout this game was a blowout victory for the most part derrick henry just running the clock out until all of a sudden you snap your fingers and it was almost an upset um but if they're in if they're in big wins Derrick Henry will eat. Dallas is run defense so far. Ew. They've given up the fourth most rushing yards allowed ever, or sorry, over the last decade through three games, and the most rushing touchdowns through three games over the last decade. It's one of the worst you've ever seen. Jonathan Taylor, outstanding. Chuba Hubbard, amazing. 21 for 114 and 5 for 55. 55! And a touchdown through the air. He had a... Big, big week, as did Zach Charbonnet in Seattle. He did. And Aaron Jones, a very nice week, caught a touchdown pass, 19 for 102 on the ground, is averaging 5.4 a carry. He also gets to go back to Green Bay next week and face his old franchise with a 3-0 and Minnesota Vikings team. Nice. That's really fun. That I feel like that's a little bit of legit revenge. Yeah. Because sure, he yeah. wanted to be there. And yeah. Yeah, and then uh, David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs once again both had big days. Gibbs' path, did you, I, I don't know who posted it. Somebody shared a funny meme of like Montgomery's path to a good game is this very linear, mm -hmm. simple, you like, know how straight it has line. to work. Yeah, and then Jameer Gibbs is like it's all over the place. <laughs> it's a pass catch here. Oh, here's a lateral for a touchdown. Here's a big run. Like zero targets. Yeah, and yet. He had a receiving touchdown. <laughs> That's is that how it goes? Yeah, I guess. I mean, for Jameer Gibbs to go out and put up a what is it, seventeen, eighteen point week with no I mean, this is his best week of the year, fantasy wise. But yeah, both of those players are just oh, funny. they're dominant. We've watched the Lions with a close eye and it's like they start with Montgomery and it's just Montgomery, then they go to Gibbs and it's just Gibbs, and then they do some ping pong drives and it, it's all over the place. Wait, so does that mean Jared Goff gets a passing touchdown for no. that? No, but no. it is a receiving touchdown. I believe, yeah. That's, that's so wild. That's how it's scored. I thought it would be a rushing touchdown for him I, from that point, like it basically almost like a. That's how I recovery. thought it counted, but it, the the stats are showing that it's a receiving, it's it's receiving not, yards. But there's no PPR points. No, that's how to pad your yards per reception, man. <laughs> Twenty yards, no reception. Just <laughs> add it to the rest. Um. Hey guys, Juwan Jennings. Oh man. Eleven for one seventy five and three. Hope you started him. We did I mean I'm happy we said he's like the spot start he's, of the he's week. He's in my uh DraftKings lineup and I Dude. I just loved him this week, but man. That, so did uh Brock Purdy. But he performed I mean it was contested catches, it was big plays, it was red zone. And next week is New England. Probably 
you know, Debo won't be back. Is Juwan Jennings now – like, do you follow this up with – you could do a lot less and be great still. Like, Juwan Jennings next week with how Brandon Ayuk's looking should be in play? If Debo and Kittle are out, he is uh, – he's a very good start, yeah. And – and um you you've got there was he's going to be a big Christian waiver Go pickup tomorrow. I think it's Christian yeah. Gonzalez who's looked pretty good. Um, their their rookie corner. So you know if that's on Brandon Ayuk, then Juwan Jennings can uh, find Brock Purdy. Again. Sophomore corner. Oh, thank you. He missed most of his rookie year though. Uh, Malik Neighbors eight for seventy eight and two, unstoppable player. And the great news was Daniel Jones looked competent. You know he Daniel Jones before the game had the better best passing rating in that division i did not realize over Jaden hurts and dak and then yeah. went out and performed that well he actually looked like the, we we were talking about this while we were watching the game we were really really surprised by how competent he looked his 24 pocket movement of 34 he, he 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 made good reads he extended plays like his offensive line still stinks and he hyper targeted the best player on the team by a long shot yeah yeah, NFL, do that stuff. <laughs> do that stuff. It works. Malik, I mean, Malik Neighbors is is a superstar. He's just he is to come in as a rookie and just everyone knows it's going to him, and not every throw is great, and it's just like mine, mine. That's mine. Wide receivers to score sixty five plus fantasy points in their first three career games since two thousand five. It's Malik Neighbors. That's it. That's the greatest All start. Right. Greatest start in twenty years. Hey, there he is. Follow the targets. We talked about mm -hmm. it. It was it's easy to waver, but Amari Cooper, the targets shot up to twelve this week. He was already uh way up there in the NFL lead in targets. Seven for eighty six and two. Yeah, it was a, a monstrous game. Hopefully you stayed the course. It's hard to do when a guy is underperforming, but if the targets are there So how do you how do you judge the I mean, I made a trade last week. Traded Jameson Williams for Amari Cooper. Tried to buy Amari Cooper low. Last week looked like the worst trade of my life. This week, complete opposite. Uh, yeah. Who wins that deal? And should I quit fantasy? I uh, the the answer to the second one is is no. Uh, who wins that deal is TBD. I think a lot of it. I want to see what the injury looks like for Sam Laporta. If he's out, it'll be closer. But right now, I mean, the targets are clearly on Cooper's side. But Deshaun Watson, oh my mercy, sweet goodness, that dude's gonna die. I I I don't remember any game where, and this is the I the Giants like he defense pretty well, and yet, but every had time no he snapped the ball, there were I mean it was like a lot to be made about how bad Caleb Williams' line was. I'm telling you, sixteen you, sacks in three games. It's the most in the NFL right now. That I mean, that's what it feels like. It feels exactly like what it is, which is. He does hold it too long. Oh, some yes. of it's on him for sure. And like, sometimes there's nothing he could have done. Yeah, but but some of it isn't on him. So, you know, half half and half. Rashi Rice was amazing. Set a career high in, in receptions, 12 for 1, 10 and 1, and leads all players in yards after the catch and missed tackles, forced. Uh, Deontay Johnson, 8 for 1, 22 and a touchdown. The this. 14 targets, that's what I wanted to see. I wanted to see when Dalton comes in, who's – his number one target. Well, and and Adam Thielen probably going to miss some time. Deontay Johnson is going to be. That's a tough one. I I imagine he goes right into your starting lineup yes. against the Cincinnati Bengals. But whew. Roma Dunze was awesome. Six for one, twelve and a touchdown, eleven targets. DJ Moore was not awesome. No. DJ Moore lucked into a fifty-five yard hail mary. Yes. Fifty or forty-four yard hail mary. But Roma Dunze, this was encouraging. Yeah, no, it was, it was a really good game, especially as he's uh, gotten a little bit past his injury. We're doing I, a podcast. <laughs> he was just saying the the gap. I was waiting for you to talk. Yeah. Uh, I, How I, do you feel about Roma Dunze? I feel very good about him. I think he's, um, you know, if, if Keenan is out, that allows him to be higher in the pecking order. But, again, the the – the end of game numbers were there for Caleb. It was not a good game for Caleb. If if you watch the game, so many poor passes. Like you, you know, what what was your end takeaway, Andy? Terrible, Did, terrible performance. Okay, I, I wasn't sure if it was just myself from what I saw, and I'm, uh, you know, having a biased lens because 
of anything, but the uh, the 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 overall performance looked really really he bad. He just couldn't finish plays. He's evasive. He can get out of the pocket, and then most of his decisions getting out of the pocket were to chuck it downfield as far as he can throw it instead of like you know making a different decision. It was weird. So, yeah, Trey Tucker, seven for ninety six and a touchdown. He'll come up on the waiver show because that's a big week. Yeah, I mean, very. Uh, I don't know. He, he, Nine he, targets. Yeah, no, 81% of the snaps. I mean, he had been a player for the Raiders who the drumbeat of the offseason was it, like, it was pretty loud of the coaching staff saying that this he's going to be the player that no one sees uh, having a good year, but then he ends up having a good year. So maybe he might be a speculation. And, and, and Brock Bowers in that game only got four targets. I would never expect Trey Brock Tucker. Bowel movement? Yes, I would never expect Trey Tucker to um, – be higher in the pecking order than Brock Bowers on a regular basis. I, I don't think I'll be in on Trey Tucker. I might try to buy low on Brock Bowers if someone's disappointed. DK Metcalf, four for 104 and a touchdown. Chris Olave, six hey. for 86 and a touchdown. Someone did something for the Saints. Yes, you called it, Andy. His breakout was going to happen, and it did. Thank you, Chris. Jefferson, six for 81 and a touchdown. All the yards came in the first half. He's unguardable. Uh, you had Amon Ra with a touchdown. <laughs> Hopkins, six for 73. Um, Hopkins looked good in this game. I was, I'm laughing at Amon Ra's. The forced touchdown to him was <laughs> so ridiculous of of Jared Goff not reading the the play. Because Jameer Gibbs was, was as open as open can possibly get for a player in the NFL. And then Jared Goff's like, no, nah, man, hold on. We called this play for the sun god. We're going to get him the ball. I mean, I have Gibbs, and I was facing Amon Ra, and to watch that play unfold, where Gibbs is standing with no I mean, one around him, and then like Amon Ra had to make a diving catch. Gibbs is on the goal line, directly in front of Goff, wide open. I mean, you could have, you he could have granny thrown that to Gibbs, and and it would have been a touchdown. But it was a touchdown, so congrats, Amon Ra. Yeah, what a read. Uh, Stephon Diggs, ten for ninety four. Yeah, what what's our so, current read on the Stephon Diggs versus Tank Dell situation? I I think that Stephon Diggs in this game was just a product of a a great Minnesota defense and garbage time checkdowns. I mean, it, it was nine point four a catch. Davis Mills came into this game. Uh, I'm not reading too much into okay. it, but yeah, I mean, I I was worried about Tank Dell. And I was worried about everybody beyond Nico. Did you see the final four plays of the game, by the way? Where they were trying to get Nico a touchdown? They threw four straight end zone targets to Nico for zero touchdowns. <laughs> That's because I mean, that was Davis Mills throwing it, right? Yeah. yeah. But it was four attempted forced targets, and none of them worked. That must have been frustrating for Nico managers. Dallas Goddard is on fire. Wait, wait. Is that the right number? What, the 10 for 170? He was 170? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, had, uh, he, he was having a great game, very, very used, and then at the – I don't know if it was if it was his final catch, but there was one where the, the defense forgot that Dallas Goddard plays for the Philadelphia Eagles, and he was on the sideline, and he ran forever. Yeah, and, 60, and ever. 61 yard reception for Dallas Goddard. I wonder how far we have to go back to see a 61 yard reception for him. I'm gonna check. I'm gonna do that. That sounds like a fun task. Um, I can tell you really quick that it has never happened. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> Jake Ferguson had a good game, six for ninety-five. Yep. I think uh, I think we were optimistic that would happen. Cole Komet out of nowhere, ten for ninety-seven and a touchdown. He is going to be fascinating to try and figure out what's going on because he had been essentially buried behind Gerald Everett, Shane Waldron's dude, mm -hmm. and like week one, forty-eight percent of the snaps a target. Next week, a pretty good jump up to seventy-seven percent. Then to 81% of the snaps and 11 targets in this game. I but. think the the more important thing is the inverse of that, which is Gerald Everett, who started in week one playing 61% of the snaps and then was down to 33%, only one target in this game. If I knew that Gerald Everett wasn't a piece of the – because he's – like you said, he's Shane Waldron's guys followed him everywhere. Yeah. Um, Cole Komet is a – I mean, a, a, a hundred thousand times better player than Gerald Everett. Um, he did get a little banged up at the end of this, though, so we'll want to watch the, the practice reports this next week. All right, we'll take a break. We'll talk about some duds, and you guys can let me know if I no. need to hit the panic alarm. All right. All right, we're going to talk about the disappointing performances for the next three hours, and um, <laughs> you guys let me know if any of these players you're panicked about. 
pooped in his big boy pants. Skip to the second one, Andy. Jalen Hurts. Sorry, I'm going to go with the first one. All right. Um, no touchdown passes. It did. Was it really that bad? It was not good. He had 311 I mean, 10 uh, fantasy points. passing okay. yards, 25 rushing yards. He had an interception, just no touchdowns. And as he far has, as sorry. worrying going forward, I don't worry long term, but short term, if he doesn't have Devontae Smith and he doesn't have A.J. Brown, then they're going to run the ball with Saquon a lot. And so you're, you're hoping to get a tush-push touchdown or one passing touchdown. So – I can't I can't fathom you would you know bench hurts or that you have uh another option but it's probably going to be a down game till he gets his dudes back. Four interceptions, three fumbles, more turnovers than Daniel Jones by a margin. It's been shaky for sure. Um and a lot of people were disappointed. Anthony Richardson 10 for 20 which is exactly his peak. Uh, possible accuracy. I haven't heard anybody on Twitter attacking me for my preseason take over the last two weeks. Um, he's not running a ton. That's the. He's not throwing it consistently. His drives are disrupted by good play, bad play. Mm -hmm. And I mean, he he had a great pass to Alec Pierce down the sideline, and then flung a ball to three defenders in the end zone. And I know it was tipped, but it was a weirdly ill-advised pass that might have been picked anyways. He's just like a rookie. Yes. Yeah, and I think it's a matter of you you play the matchups. Um, we I was worried going into this week. Chicago Bears defense is fully legit. So this um, is full bench next week. This is full bench next week against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, the the Steelers keep games low scoring. They turn the ball over. They sack the quarterback. So yeah, this is. Full bench for Anthony Richardson next week. Anthony Richardson has three passing touchdowns on the year. He has six interceptions and two fumbles on the year. Yeah, and 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 if do not hear what we're not saying, you do not do not hear what we're not saying. Did I did I too many okay. knots? No, I think, I think you're, you're good. All right, okay, I think you're good. Um, we're not saying to drop Anthony Richardson. This is a guy who can do something that other players can't, and in the right matchup he's going to have, you know, three to five more games this year where he's winning you the week. He's the quarterback one, two, or three on the week. So you want to play the matchups for now, and it's just bench him, don't drop him. All right. Um, where are we moving now? C.J. Stroud. C.J. Stroud struggled immensely against Minnesota. So C.J. Stroud has been the QB8. 16 and 20 currently 22 could drop even lower than 22 uh, i mean not always easy is it no no it is not in it's i mean you know, when you're a pocket passer you will you will have inconsistencies but we still like i it, we're not seeing it i think it's important that we view him as and i know this this is not going to be a popular thing to say or hear but I really think right now we need to be viewing him as a streaming quarterback, as a matchup okay. play. I know he's got the three superstar wide receivers, and he could sling it out, and he's certainly going to be great. But if you look at his splits last year, we talked about this in the Truth Series, his splits against good opponents uh, and his home road, like the, the combination, they were wildly drastic. He massacred bottom 16 defenses, made them look silly, made them look like they shouldn't even belong on the field. And against top defenses, he really, really struggled. It was like a I, – Kyle, I don't know if you can find that data from the True Series, but it was insane. It was like a 8 or a 10-point swing between those I mean, he, top defenses and bottom he, defenses. His last 17 games played, he only has 41% of those over over 20 points. I mean, you can be a better, fan, or a better NFL quarterback than a fantasy quarterback. Patrick Mahomes has not finished inside the top 10 in any of his games. He's a great quarterback. That's where Stroud is falling into that category right now where – you know, they want to have a good running game. Joe Mixon was not there, and Minnesota's a great defense. And so it was kind of – they put Stroud into a box yesterday, and he couldn't climb out of it by mm -hmm. himself. I mean, Akers was 7 for 21 on the ground. You didn't have a running game. Yeah, so here, here's the here's the splits from last year. Um, home road splits, he was plus 7.7 .7 fantasy points better at home. Than on the road, and when you talk about top sixteen versus bottom sixteen defenses, 
he was 7.7 points worse against the uh, the good defenses. Let me – and maybe there's not an answer that we have to this question right now because I, I don't disagree, Jay, of like maybe we need to reevaluate how we're looking at Stroud at least for now. Who is not – a stream only quarterback no. at this point of of the Great NFL question. season. So I think you've got the top guys, the top mobile rushing guys, like like, like Le Josh. Lamar is Josh, not a streaming quarterback. No, Lamar, Lamar, Kyler's not a streaming quarterback. I agree with that. Uh, I, I would Josh say Allen is obviously not, and Hertz is not a streaming quarterback. Uh, obviously, I'm, I'm when the uh, yeah was those four. But but I think the strategy needs to be right now in most of these leagues. You need to be rostering multiple quarterbacks. You know, if you've got C.J. Stroud, you need to be picking up Geno Smith or Brock Purdy or the and, just, and looking at matchups and just saying like I I've got I'm going to play the better option this week. Like Derek Carr. I mean, sometimes <laughs> it's not going to work, brother. But you got to try. <laughs> like Baker. <laughs> well, it's it's just uh, a hard it's a hard game to play. Is Mahomes a streaming quarterback? <laughs> oh, shut your mouth. <laughs> Oh, I mean, it feels goodness. like it. It does feel like it. It's felt like it for a while. But if Mahomes at, at quarterback five is a streaming quarterback, then he's not a streaming quarterback. Okay, you know so what here's I mean? The thing. Like give, if that's give it, me the number. What what remind me the uh, the last seventeen rolling games? You said C.J. Stroud. What was his forty one percent of the time he was over twenty points? I want you to guess Patrick. Oh Mahomes. my oh, god! You've seen it and you've ruined the thing. <laughs> Andy, I'll just tell you then. Uh, the amount of games over 20 points of four point per passing over his last 17 over his last 17 Patrick Mahomes has cleared that 20 point benchmark which is the benchmark we need for quarterbacks 17.6 percent of his games so one in five he's an F consistency he now? is he an F, F right now inconsistent so yes I don't to, to go back to live the question, on this planet anymore to go back to the question the answer is yes and oh I'm telling my. you they stop with the cover they two. do not have it's not they don't have receivers guys Kelsey isn't the same guy, and Worthy isn't worthy of a start. So you, he threw a touchdown to Juju in 2024. Yeah, he did, which should have been Rice's. <laughs> I, when I checked the game log, and I'm watching as I'm driving to pick my kids up last night, and I'm seeing Justin Watson coming down with passes, something's wrong. Tyreek Hill mattered yeah. to his fantasy output. For sure. They still win because the refs. Um, all right, Jared Goff, <laughs> 199 and 2. Baker. Also pumpkin, although twenty five for thirty three, but only one sixty three. It was, it was like a ton of sacks and the, it was garbage. The Denver defense looks really, really good. I think there's your every given Sunday. I mean, uh, every given Sunday, the the Denver Broncos looked awful. Mm -hmm. Baker and the Tampa Bay Ray, uh, Tampa Bay Bucks. <laughs> Tampa I said Bay Rays. <laughs> they looked amazing, and but but they're at home against Denver. They'll be fine, right? Yeah. So uh, I I do I do think that um that we we're we're far enough in the season now where we could start to identify some of these defenses that we say okay week one week two now if you put three of them together like Minnesota like Denver you can go th these are actually legitimate defenses James Conner struggled the D Detroit the, man. Detroit rushing defense is so good Ramondre people were very upset with the uh the way their week started uh, is that because he had uh essentially negative points yes yeah that's why mm -hmm. Tony Pollard like was goodness gracious as bad as you can be once we finally bought in. Yep. Josh Jacobs had a pretty bad week. Uh, he was they split him with Emmanuel Wilson. Josh Jacobs was a 52% of the snaps for them yesterday, 14 carries. Emmanuel Wilson had 12 carries. Like, well, the game was kind of uh Yeah. I guess it wasn't really out of hand it, completely. No, it, it was not. So that that is that will be something to keep an eye on. How yeah, worried? Like, which, like like last week, Aaron Jones and Ty Chandler. You're like, oh, do we uh, do we have an RBBC propping up here? And no, Aaron Jones was everything this week. So this could just be a, a blip, but it is something to monitor. How worried do we need to be about Devon A. Chan's future when you know Mostert's coming back? They don't have a quarterback. They're on their third stringer. He had seventy four percent of the snaps. It was a pretty down game. Eleven for thirty. And Man. just three for twenty eight through the air, like the the Miami Dolphins cannot win unless they get a quarterback in there. So if they want to win games and they have the talent and the ability to, they need to they need to go out and find someone. Um I is Tim Boyle better than Skyler though? I he is. I think I, Tim but I but not, he, not not enough to move a needle in okay. any 
um, important direction. You know, if you went out and got, you know, you trade for Joe Flacco or someone like that, Joe Flacco could run this offense. Still think Tannehill's just sitting there. Sure, Tannehill, whoever, but it can't be the guys on the roster right now. Find your Dalton. And, and I, yeah. I'll, Find your Dalton. I'll say this for, you know, the, they want to make sure that Tua um, is allowed to make the right decision for him. They are handling it so well. But I would just say, if you keep the quarterbacks on your roster, you are forcing Tua's hand to say, I've got to get back. You, you give Tua the time for Tua if you go and you get Flacco or Tannehill or someone because, you know, it's almost like Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddell, Devon Achan, I mean, he had five targets, which was nice, but the whole defense is going to be – it's going to basically look like goal line defense soon. You're going to have 11 guys right up on the line and be like, well, we'll just tackle the quarterback or whoever the quarterback passes the ball to one yard from him. All right, let me get your uh, – by the way, do down week for Dobbins. He got the majority of the work. Yeah, I'm not worried about him. I'm a little worried about it. Really? Because if, if Herbert's out, yeah. Okay. Um, just because I don't think they'll have a threat of that play action pass, but it, only short term, only short term. Gotcha. Um, panic alarm for Rashad White. I think so. Jason, do you want me to push it? I don't want a panic alarm because I don't want people to flat bench him yet. Uh, I will say this. He's, he's been so abysmal on the ground, which kind of his thing. I mean, that's yeah. like career wise, um, still had six targets, five catches in this game. They got a guy now, though. But Bucky Irving looks really good. Bucky, they got a guy. Bucky looks fully legitimate. Looks somehow bigger in the NFL than he did in college because that was kind of my knock on him was just he's a very tiny player, but he's he's quality. It looks better in the uh, what like the black and red there. Yeah, I guess so. But um, Bucky Irving nine for seventy on the ground, and that was while Rashad White against this Denver defense went six for seventeen. And it's the the bigger issue for me on Rashad White is week one against Washington, the Bucks scored thirty seven points. I know Baker was incredible, uh, getting the ball down the field, but it's, he was running back twenty in that game where he, he Rashad White of last year that would have been a top ten performance. Goes to the, the Detroit the next week, running back fifty five. Currently the running back thirty four on the week. Like the we are not we are not passing voluming our way into him being anything worth starting it's worth reminding people that Rashad White hurt his groin yeah 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 and so from a productive you know pr production standpoint he may still be struggling with an injury Bucky Irving looked far more spry seems capable in the passing game oh he's a great pass catcher. and uh, they if you if you watch the game you saw them both on the field a lot they they run you know a sweep with Bucky Irving with Rashad in the backfield. DeAndre Swift is oh. he? I'm gonna say this because I don't want to be hyperbolic. Okay, but is he the worst player in the NFL history? <laughs> um, gosh. Is, or is the Are offensive we, we're line? We're not. We're not. We're gonna take Bryce Young out because we're still waiting. Uh, a player is currently starting. Yeah. Okay, then yes. <laughs> he's he is terrible. And Do you guys see the play though on the goal line the the freeze frame? Remember when they they threw a, a pitch? Oh, where, where, to the, him? where the O line is completely pancake. The, oh, yes. the entire offensive line yeah. within one second of the snap is on the ground for yeah. the for the Bears. Yeah, that that, like, that Swift has no chance. That I mean, part is not his fault. But they are uh, Roshan Johnson. His involvement went way up compared to what it has been. Now, Swift is in trouble for volume. One point five a carry against the league's worst rushing defense going into the game. That was an improvement from one point three the week before. Thank you. Though. Okay, so glass things, things still are really empty. DeAndre Swift had to be everything. Like the check said that he should be the guy for the Bears of of a three down back. But the, how good is that agent right now? <laughs> that that agent is running away. He's like no takesy backsies. I mean Betsy said it. The Miles yeah. Sanders of this year, Javante Williams. Was five for twelve. Yeah, uh, very terrible. They stole a touchdown from him, but that I'm not saying he was good, but I'm saying he should have had six more points. Uh, he is currently two point nine, one point five, two point four. He has rushed for twenty three, seventeen, and twelve yards. This is as not the a, dude. <laughs> <laughs> this is not going to work. Well, and I, on top of that, a. Spring has opened up for the Denver Broncos. Oh, yeah, so some water is flowing yeah, so there. Things are cleaning up 
for the Denver Broncos <laughs> yes. as a running back actually had a bunch of success for him. He did. Oh, he that must good. have been McLaughlin. It was not. Oh, okay. it was. It, it was not him. It was. No, the, the, there I'm was trying a, to put my finger there, on it. There was a poopy situation here, <laughs> but I think maybe they found a way to wash it. Yeah, away. they found a more optimal way that is not just wiping. They're not wiping it. No, no they're not no. wiping it away. They're no. washing it away. Uh, apparently, we've been saying his name wrong the whole time. We thought it was Beatty, but it is Tyler Bidet. Bidet. <laughs> his name is a Bidet. The Bidet is is going to clean up. The Denver Broncos running back situation. Nine for 70. That's more rushing yards than Williams has in three games. The, I don't know how you see what the bidet was able to spray and not put him out there more. Javante is broken. Yeah, he, he, does, this, he, this he, is he doesn't have it. Uh, but the, great news, the bidet could be a the thing. The bidet is small and i would say that's the issue is like you don't want a big clunky bidet well you want it to fit the seat that yeah it's, that it's on and so i think this bidet you've got to have room this used to be dude looks like a baby yeah well no longer yeah. 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 Oh, now it's dude looks like a bidet <laughs> when that, tell the we're dealing with the week the in our own way i mean I, we were just cackling to yeah, ourselves we thought he was and mispronouncing then, like these it. announcers what how stupid are they it's saying it Calling him bidet, it's Beatty. And then we and, looked it up, and then someone tweeted that the that they checked with with Tyler before the game, and he said no, it's bidet. Maybe he's maybe he's making a joke. Maybe <laughs> I don't know, but now guess who is the bidet? <sighs> okay, sorry, man. I'm sorry. updating his nickname. Please do uh, I, the bidet. I, I we have more guys we have to talk about. Um, oh gosh, please, no. Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle. Do I push the button yes, for them? We, yep. Yep. <laughs> Is Tyreek Hill now the the most difficult fantasy player to manage because you can't not play him, yeah, but you can't I'm play him? I'm it's, still going to play him. It feels better to have Waddle because <laughs> I can bench him. Right. Oh, my gosh. You know what I mean? Like, I can choose and say, okay, well, you know. If You're they're, right. If they're playing against the commanders, okay, maybe I'll, maybe I'll throw Waddle in. Otherwise, I'm going to bench him or whatever. But if you got Tyreek Hill, you can't bench Tyreek Hill. And it's like you should have benched him for Juwan Jennings. I mean, he had Tyree Kill had five fantasy points last week. Obviously, they started with Tua, but Tua left that game. He had five fantasy points this week. Yikes, man! Mike Evans got the Patrick Sertan treatment, yeah. two for seventeen. Don't worry about him. Devontae Adams, four for forty on nine targets, had some drops, which is a weird game. It was a weird game. Uh, Coach Pierce is real mad, and I saw. People connecting it to being Devontae Adams. If you missed the quote, Coach Pierce after the game said, uh, as the game was going along, I saw some players making business decisions, and we will make business decisions moving forward, which maybe that's just a coach being big mad at his players, but that was ominous. I, I saw a defensive play where there was literally I, – I, I don't remember what, what defender it was, but I mean it was a clear – he didn't go for a tackle. He made a full-on business decision. I saw in the comments. Not every, Adams, just a defensive in player. The, in the comments to that that message, everyone was talking about Adams, okay. trade Adams, that Adams was phoning in it or whatever. I didn't personally see that, but I I watched a defensive player who was right there to make a tackle and kind of backed out of the way, and then another guy makes a tackle, then he like hops on like, oh, yeah, I was part of this. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Half tackle. Uh what about C.D. Lamb? Dak threw the ball 51 times yeah. for 379 yards. C.D. was 4 for 67 with a fumble. The, the C.D. Lamb, uh, yeah, I'm not worried about it. Um, but the combination of him and Brandon Ayuk. Brandon Ayuk had 10 targets. He looks terrible this year. He had 10 targets. He, he looks terrible. The situation for him set up to be the best possible scenario he could dream of. Of He is the only show in town other than Jawan Jennings' backup wide receiver. And then he goes five for forty eight, which is following a four for forty three, which is following a two for twenty eight. He and, is and, he is not playing good football. And CD right now, five receptions week one, four receptions week two, four receptions week three. And if we look at Jamar Chase, Jamar Chase is at uh you know nine hasn't hit ten fantasy points, five fantasy points last week. TBD. I think it'll be uh, good against Washington, but these holdout guys. Yeah, that, that's what I was going to say. Is the the training camp guys? We're seeing a lot of preseason football these days. Yeah, um, Jamison Williams, one for nine. Gee, brutal, absolutely so, brutal. That one. I'm not. 
I'm not overly concerned about that. And then that's just a. It's a weird game. Thirty points at halftime. Thirty points put up at the half. The Cardinals shut out the Lions. The Lions did not score in the second half. Um, still lost. They the game. all shut themselves out. Michael Pittman, should you drop him? Uh, maybe. He is four for I thirty-six. Mean, he had, like when I talked about him on Sunday Live, I brought him up. Brought him up in the we context left this of this city. Yeah, it was like this. Michael Pittman's a bench for me. How, how can you play a guy when the quarterback is not even completing half of his passes? Tank Dell was 5 for 62, kind of saved his game over the last two drives. Calvin Ridley, after a big week last week, 1 for 9. Hopkins was all of a sudden healthy and a little younger One this week. One target for Ridley in the first two and a half quarters of the game. What's the truth about Ridley? That he's going to be inconsistent because of Levis? I mean, he, he he was. Yeah, I mean, it's one one. Did you say one the, target? He was the wide receiver eight no, last one catch, week. Three okay. targets. Okay, because no I, one over the first two and a half quarters. Yeah, the the issue here is Will Levis. I feel like you can be the number one for Will Levis, but you can't split with him. Hopkins had seven targets in this game, and it was good. Six for seventy three and a touchdown. So if all of a sudden this is a you know uh, a shared first you know that this game's going to be this guy's the wide receiver one that game's going to be that guy that that gets a little scary is that what you think is going to happen i don't i don't think that no i still think calvin ridley will be the majority starter uh the primary read the the number one leader in targets yards receptions through the course of the season uh what about jackson smith and jigba who came off a good game and went went three for 39 yeah it just it, you uh, felt like you could start it you did and a reminder of like the way that that game went dk metcalf was in the studs he caught four passes. Like one of them was a, a gigantic touchdown. Which what was Lockett's final numbers? Uh, he, I felt like he was involved. He was. Um, Tyler Lockett was five, five, five for forty six. And, and this was the game against the Dolphins with the backups, where the and, Dolphins put up three points. Yeah, and Charbonnet, like he, Charbonnet was the full workhorse. It weird, and actually though. looked okay. It was it was seventeen three long into the like into the fourth, I think. Yeah, but it. Rashid Shahid. <laughs> I <laughs> banish you. Shaheen, Mike, has I banish you into the nether. Mike has been so reluctant over now years to get on the Rashid Shaheed bandwagon, and you finally did it. Yeah, I did. You put him in your DraftKings lineup. You said, "Okay, this is I'm in." I need to run a test with Mike real quick. Next week, you got a flex spot open, and you have to choose between Rashid Shaheed okay. and DeAndre Swift. Oof. Or do you leave it blank? I. Uh, yeah, I think I'll, look. They're not going to get me any points, so I'd rather just be a man about it and take okay. my zero. So you'll put Michael Pittman in there over those guys. Yeah, yeah probably. Get your four. <laughs> get your four <laughs> points. <to> check out <laughs> Mark Andrews. Oh my this one, goodness! Likely. This one, the Mark Andrews one, has to be investigated uh, by the FBI. First of all, we don't. I don't know what happened. He ran. It's been. He ran four routes. That's what is going on. Like this has to be reported this week. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. There, we need more information. What in the world is going on? But what is, do you do now? Is this a he's not recovered from the injury? Uh, he had the the car accident scare in during training camp. Like what? I, I look. Lamar didn't throw the ball very much at all. But the four routes run is. That's terrifying. Hey, hey, you had a 25% uh, target per route run. <laughs> Isaiah Likely had 12 targets in week one when he was everybody's darling on the waiver wire. He's had four total targets since that time. So four targets in two games for Likely. And then the disappearing act of Mark Andrews. Now, is it Kohler? Is that their other tight end? Because uh, they I've, – I've, 88? I have – this is not normal for Mark Andrews. He's normally out there a ton, but – Charlie Kohler is a good blocking tight end, and there's some talk about he's just out there blocking in the 250 yards on the ground. But Mark Andrews was always an every week player, and now yes, I don't know. Now what do you do? I mean, I, I don't. I was asked a lot about it on Twitter, and my I gave a uh, a jocular response, but I think it might be the truth of what am I going to do with Mark Andrews? I'm going to see the performance. I'm going to turn the shower on. I'm just going to go right in. I'm going to weep. I'm going to wail. Clothes on? Clothes on, yeah. yeah. It, it doesn't matter because you know what? It doesn't matter if you, you get your clothes on what because nothing matters. You want to feel right. Mark soggy on the outside and because you feel Then I'll play him inside. next week, and I'll just repeat the process every single week. I don't know what to do with Mark Andrews. 
I don't think anybody knows what to do with Kelsey. I don't think anybody this, knows yeah, what to do with Laporta. Follow the steps. Well, Laporta's at least hurt, so he can't hurt he you. Yeah. Like, what is Titans, going on? This was supposed what is going to be on? the year. Like every you were the chosen one. Every single year, we've we've done this for a decade. <laughs> it's just been like tight end position sucks as a whole. You know, you get Kelsey or you get Gronk or you get Jimmy I mean, Graham. You get like one of the two or you get, get Mark Andrews. A superstar. There's one or two every year and then the rest are trash. This year, we had six, seven, eight. You know, if you want to include Kyle Pitts and there George used Kittle. To be players where if your family was held at gunpoint and you had to pick one to score 10 points to save their lives, you'd have a name. Oh, yeah. yeah. You used to have a name you could give. Who would you, who are you picking? Is Christian who, who McCaffrey you, back yet? Who are you picking to to <laughs> save to save your family, at, Jason? At tight end. Who do you have to start to save your family next week? Ten points and they live. Ten points and they live. Whoa, <laughs> that's a crazy question. I told you. Ten points and they live. Your family's in trouble, man. Ten points and I guarantee it. Yeah, ten points and your family makes it. Oh man. My family's dead, man. You want to hear some wild? I think I go Brock. You want some wild stuff here, guys? <laughs> I don't know, man. But he can't get a touchdown. Oh, me. Hot off of uh, this week's performance for <laughs> Dallas Goddard, he is the number one tight end in fantasy right now. Yes. Can we get that applause button for yeah, Dallas Goddard? Yeah, that's my guy. My guy, Dallas, Dallas Goddard. The Woo! Who you almost... You were one final play from wanting to <laughs> cast him into the abyss last week. Instead, he's helped me win twice. Number two is Brock Bowers. That one makes sense. The number three tight end of the year, hot off of a massive performance in week three, is Cole Komet. Oh, wow. Overtook Hunter Henry, huh? Where's Hunter Henry? Hunter Henry is now the tight end seven. What a loser. George Kittle is the tight end six, and he put up approximately 0.0, .0 points in week three. This, this is people are trying to respond this to is this hot liquid doo doo. People are trying to respond with this with saying, "Let's just ditch the tight end position, and go another flex." Is that the answer? Or do we need? To, I don't. Do think we need that's the, the answer yet? No. Uh, I. If this keeps going, that's the answer. I can't. <laughs> I can't have this pain anymore, guys. I can't. You look. It's a flex. You want to play the superstar tight end, and that's how you want to build your roster. I, you let, are free to do it let because me just, it's a flex. You, there's one man who can help us this week. His name's Dalton Kincaid. He better get it done. <laughs> he better get it done tonight and give us some hope for the position. All signs point to is not going to happen. I don't know. This week was pretty upside down. It's not. So. It's not happening. Oh my gosh! It's um, all pain. So that's going to do it. Waivers and streamers tomorrow. Trade for trade away players on Wednesday. Matchups and shame Thursday and Friday. Join us at jointhefoot.com. Support the show. And good luck. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.